So guys, I'm making this video because I want to talk about Mithra now. It's been like about two weeks since she released. I made my last video on her, and just how my thoughts have progressed with her since the last video. So my last video, I said you know, at worst top 40, potentially just top 30, likely like top 20, eh, like somewhere between 30 to 20, and even as high as top 10, but unlikely. I'm just gonna say I was wrong. Yeah. Uh, I was making a matchup chart on stream, and there's a speculative matchup chart. This was probably a few days ago, you know, so I haven't played or even seen every matchup with her. But just from playing the character a lot, and labbing, all that stuff, I was making this matchup chart, and the more I was, like, filling in characters, the more I'm just like, wins, 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 maybe even wins, 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 maybe loses, maybe loses, and everything else is just evens, or more likely wins. And it kind of hit me that, like, and by the characters that I think she loses to are almost definitely Min Min, actually. And maybe Diddy Kong. And I could see her also beating Diddy Kong. So it's like, uh. And I also think she might actually lose to Steve, really enough. After playing it recently. But yeah. I was just like, wait. Something's wrong here. If I can't find matchups where she, I think she loses except, like, one or two. It's a problem. So, getting into what, like, what changed. First of all, you know, I would mention her neutral was insane, right? Like, she kind of was neutral for free. But, you know, at first I was kind of like, oh, the damage output isn't that great. You know, she has some strings, nothing too, too crazy sometimes. But I undervalue just how easily she wins neutral and how much she actually gets off of it. Because she gets a lot more damage off neutral than expected. Like, if she does something like, just, you know, you're doing whatever, abuse her speed. Oh, you have something, run up down tilt. Not a true combo, technically, but how fast her attacks are and how fast she is in the massive range and just everything. It basically frame traps. And there's basically a 30% damage string that's unavoidable. Or, like, you can avoid it by bearing, like, double jumps and air dodges, maybe. But then you get chased in disadvantage hard anyway and take just as much, if not more, damage. So, like, that's just how she wins, like, how she hits you. Hits you with anything in neutral and suddenly you're in the shitty spot where it's hard to land. You're taking a lot of damage immediately. You're not taking damage immediately. It's like you're gonna be forced into a bad spot. And she has no problem chasing you there and keeping you in bad spots. So, like. Her damage output consistent. Even her grab, by the way, gives like. Like, once again, you know it's not true. You're gonna be taking almost 20 damage just because she can chase you so well. And that's really scary. We well, consider power, which we'll talk about later. Um, being able to just force side projectiles is absurd. Like, if I fight someone throwing a projectile this range, or even this range, I can just do like run up, roll in, force sight, punish. Like, it actually negates slower projectiles or predictable projectile play, period. And then multi moves on block. Things like, say, Yoshi back every time, well, Young Link up B. Like, all these moves that I multi, you can basically just say, hey, you do this move and I block it. I roll. Or spot dodge mid move foresight get a punish not always a big punish but something it basically this character basically doesn't let you use certain moves between her speed with punishing things foresight on projectiles and multi hits her range and frame data leg are just kind of mashed and some characters you see can't press buttons that much it, it, it's kind of just not fair <laughs> i'll be honest and like even for killing you have pyro but even without pyro Mithra herself has decent enough kill power. Um, this is something that has to be explored more, but I guarantee you that being a huge factor with her is off stage neutral B because this move actually ignores weight when you use aerial version of it or charge version of it on stage. But like, because they kill characters like Bowser kind of early, just like if you're here, surprisingly. And also knock back was very good to set more edge guards, which by their hedge guarding game is still just okay. But like, it's functional enough that's not hindering her at all. As long as you know how to play it, right? And not go too deep. And that's because she can set up things like... Just like this. And not your combo, of course. But... And this is one of those things where... I still have to work on this personally. I've been playing her because I'm just like, bro. I feel like I have to play her. <laughs> if I'm being honest. But like... That's one of those things where people learn how to like... Understand the frame traps in situations where she can and can't be punished for doing that. It gets really scary. The combo enders, edge guards, 
Whatever, there's so much potential in using Neutra B to end stuff with. And up B as well, but up B isn't quite as good, just because you miss that, it's bad. But it's like this, and the race boss isn't that bad. So yeah, overall, her tools are better than I expected. Um, it's fun, your side view is actually the tool that I think overall is most disappointing to me. Not because it's bad, it's still really good as a whiff punish tool. And like a reactionary, like you did anything tool. Even as a hard retool, and even as a recovery tool, this is really silly. A little hard to space sometimes, especially online, but if you do it like this. A lot of times the opponent can't repunish them if they're not like in the right position beforehand. So it's a pretty safe-ish way to recover. It depends on the matchup, of course, the positioning, but like... Even her recovery game has ended up being pretty good between that. Oh, between this. The fact that her air dodge to ledge, if she does like this, is untoo frameable. I, I don't know what the devs were thinking. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised if that's removed as a glitch or something. Because it's so hilarious to be like here and go, yeah, you can't edge guard this now. Like, you have to chase her deeper to edge guard her. But she's so darn fast. And she's kind of light, so if you hit her, she gets knocked away pretty far pretty early. Between that and her airspeed, she can do, like, get to a ledge that before a lot of characters can even stop her. That was actually one of the biggest things I saw, which is like, uh oh, long term, that's not gonna be okay. But yeah, so the only and like then I remember last my video, oh one of my videos I said um that like you can kind of deal with her if you have like fast attacks out of shield. And while well, I think that should have been the case, I think what ends up happening is because she has so much range in her attacks, but has like the chic frame data and mobility. She kind of doesn't have to deal with, like, fast attacks. Like, if you have a fast attack with low range, she just outranges while I'm mashing you. Or equally mashing with you. If your attack has equal range, but not as good frame data, she just runs around, mashes, and you can't quite, like, press buttons before her or after her, really. You know, if you're slow, you can't even fight her on your terms. You have to fight her on her terms, because she can actually just camp everyone. And, like, she can basically play like, a timeout character if she really wants to, because she's so darn fast and so threatening with all this range. And frame data. And like, I've kind of found some characters with like really good ground control, like Min Min. Or maybe like, I mentioned Steve because of the blocks and like his combo ability. Uh, I can kind of keep her at bay. But you might think of the characters I kind of can, like maybe Pac Man, maybe We Fit. I'm not thinking in terms like, oh, they beat her. I'm thinking like, okay, they can kind of slow her down and not get slaughtered by her. Because I've just been kind of thinking that like most characters kind of get slaughtered by her. And really when people get better at this character, it's going to be one of those things where it's like, she's also not too hard to play, which is largely because she's just really good. That like, I feel like she's just going to be a torment threat that kind of ruins a lot of characters' lives. I'm not calling for nerfs yet, but I'm going to say I will be surprised if like eventually this character is overwhelming and needs nerfs because that's just mithra and your know, mithra also has good ways to kill us so it's not even an issue with her as well like her smash is all pretty good like honestly just dash around looking for a power smash and someone whiffing anything is so solid because it's pretty fast good range and she's so fast up smash catch landings pressure shields read rolls it, it does so much it's so versatile as a move that kills smartly well I mentioned her edge guarding and you should be off stage. Up here in the top is also decent. Um, even down smash is like an okay kill move, although it's probably worse. But then of course Pyra, who also is better than I thought. Now she's not great. Like you're not gonna play neutral with Pyra, especially offline, a lot. What happens a lot of times with Pyra I notice is like, here, not that great. But you have your opponent in the corner. So if your opponent's either in the off stage, on the ledge or in the corner, she goes from being not that great to insanely good. Because even though her attacks have a little bit of slow start, our smash up with Mithra actually, um, one of the few things I noticed that's good against her is that because she's kind of a fast faller, and her attacks have a lot of landing lag, like a good most of them, like, if you can like bait out her jump ins, you can catch her landings pretty easily if she's committing to attacks. There's a little weakness you can abuse, but I think good players will get around that pretty easily, especially using platforms and just knowing when to attack. But anyway, back to Pyra. Um, when you're in the corner, like, her slower frame data matters, but it's not 
that slow. Like, this is so much rage. Even though it's frame 11 or so, it's not awful. I think this is frame 14, but it's massive. Like, frame whatever. So massive that, like, it's not a big deal. Between, like, just, it's sort of actually get close to her. And then a lot of her stuff is safe. Like, if you can't, like, confidently whip punish her, because you don't have room to, like, dash back, this is, like, minus 9 or so on block. This is, like, minus 9 or so on block. This is, like, minus 9. Like, she has so many things that are, like, single digits on block with this range that, because she's slow, when she has to chase you and has, like, room to whiff, it's bad. But once she doesn't have to chase you, once she doesn't have much room to whiff, and she's just, like, in threat range of, like, all of her nonsense, She's really good, actually. Side B pressure is insane. This move is actually insane. It has counterplay because you can like roll out during the move, but it's kind of unreliable. Bigger characters can't really do that too well. Um, the timing on it's a little bit inconsistent in my experience, I think, because of how the sword like moves. All the maybe I just needs to like see it more. And like you have to kind of commit to like, if you want to get around it early, you have to commit to that, which usually open to so much power BS like. This, this, just so many things that like she's really scary to get away from in these situations, and even neutral, you can't really approach her that well because of these big hitboxes. Because her airspeed actually isn't awful, her ground speed sucks, but like, her airspeed is actually pretty good. All like, yeah, no, it's pretty good. I think it's like middle of the pack airspeed, so like, this is enough to like space around really well with. Between that, this amazing tool, just as like dash tech, which is nice, and the up B is like a hey, don't make mistakes type of button. So massive that it's so hard to approach her. So if someone wants to like, just play passive with Pyra until they find an opening, it's like hey you or just go by Mithra and establish neutral control and just win neutral back to Pyra. Not even talk about how like the ledge trap thing with like her is really scary. She can always edge guard you if she gets like a right time with down air or even does like this. And then like her juggling game. If she misses the juggle, she kind of has to give it up. But it's so scary because of all the range that like she's not committing too much and if she gets this right, might just die. Also, run off jump off fair or run off fair are both really good edge guard tools with her. Like you have to respect this so much. And it's just so good. Also, look at the ledge magnet. That ledge magnet's actually absurd. It makes edge guarding her really hard. If kind of someone mid you can't like get close to her right away. Like you basically can't read two frame that well. Um, and it's just a farther recovery than expected. But with her pretty good airspeed, it means she makes it back a lot more than you think. Now, power is combo food, and she's so much easier to like deal with the general than Mithra. But you just don't replay really pirate like percents where you get comboed really hard and like set up for edge guards. And it's not a big deal at all. And overall like Pyra is by herself not even an awful character. But when using the right situations she feels absurdly oppressive. And of course kill power on her kit. Just you're above 100% you're just dying to so much stuff. I would say her damage output isn't actually that great, surprisingly. Like, Mithra is kind of better at doing damage because Pyra's combos are so, like, 1 2 for, like, you know, 20 plus damage. Maybe, like, 30 if you have, like, a platform. You do things like this and, like, land on the platform pad. But even then, it's not awful because individual hits do good damage, but it's not great. And yeah, I could go into all the moves in detail, or whatever. But really, the point was, like, yeah, my initial impressions really understated this character. And I've been saying I won't be surprised if she's the best character in the game, crazy enough. We'll see, I don't really like the hype of characters like this that much. I like to be a bit more reserved on my character placements. But, uh... Man, do I feel like whenever I lose with this character, that I just got outplayed. Simply enough. And man, when I went with this character, I don't feel like I outplay people. Which is, for most of the time with Min, kind of the same thing. And that character, I think, is top 10, really disgustingly good. And I get even more of those vibes from uh, the Aegis. So yeah, that's the video, guys. Have fun with your new top tier overlord. 
I'm probably gonna play this character as a secondary. Maybe as a main if I need it, but like... I don't know. Probably as like a secondary for like... Just winning certain matchups. And just because this character is also really fun anyway. So why not? Anyway guys, peace.